time now to let it rip with former Democratic State Representative Sherry Gay Bagnago, Washtenaw County Prosecutor Ellie Savitt, attorney and conservative advocate Terry Johnson, and former Republican State Representative Terrence Mikowski. And as always, Fox 2 anchor and attorney Charlie Langton with us as well. Such a big day in the news, a big week in the news. This one, uh, I don't know, it took some people by surprise. Other people said, look, this is politics as we expect it to roll right now. Even the Supreme Court in Colorado getting involved with something, Ellie, we'll begin with you, in which they said anyone who took part in an insurrection should not be on this ballot. How did the Colorado Supreme Court get away with this when there's been no charge against the former president? Well, I don't know if it's a question of how they got away with that or anything that the Colorado Supreme Court did. It's right there in the Constitution. Section 3 of the 14th Amendment says anybody who previously took an oath to defend the Constitution and engages in insurrection is disqualified from an office but of did he engage in insurrection? State. Well, I look, I think if you look at the events of January 6th, and it's important to note that the Colorado uh, Supreme Court decision took place after a multi-day trial with evidence, with witnesses about what happened on January 6th. And there's How can you say it without no. a conviction? Well, it, it, there was a due process, there was a trial as to due. whether he engaged in insurrection. <laughs> and, and, and not everything needs to be a criminal conviction. If they meant to say, if the framers of the 14th Amendment meant to say convicted of the crime of treason or something like that, they would have said that. But remember the wow. historical context here. <laughs> this is about disqualifying former Confederates from holding office under the United States. That doesn't require a criminal conviction, so there's a very hmm. good reason why okay. you don't require so, a criminal conviction. I want to come back context. to you in a moment here. Uh, Terry, I'm going to get right to you here. Uh, the language that the Supreme Court used in Colorado right. was essentially somebody who took part in an insurrection, essentially they're saying, did not protect the Constitution and in fact did something to hurt it. But the argument that many Republicans are making is, wait a minute here, there's been no conviction. Is that is that the one that you're sticking with right now? That well, there's, there's no conviction and, and again, I, I'm sure due process works in Washtenaw County. I know it does because I've tried many cases out there, but where's the due process? Where is, where, you know, if you look at the 14th Amendment, you know, before we get to Section 3, it right. talks about due process, right? You are depriving this man of a right at this point to do something. There's been no conviction. There, he hasn't been arraigned. He hasn't pled not guilty or guilty. There's been no conviction. At this point, we're just saying, yeah, he was in it, so he's so, out of there. Uh, to go to Sherry real quickly here, on the air every day here, obviously, in journalism, we don't just say the person walked into the bank and shot two people. We say police say, or we attribute it or say is accused of or allegedly. In this case, you have a state constitution that, that it basically says, hey, if this guy did A, then he doesn't get to do B. Is that fair? You know, uh, the prosecutor here is, is an expert in law. I, I don't have a law degree or law license, but as a former legislator and as someone who has always stood my ground on due process, I take issue um, with the Colorado Supreme Court and, and, and their actions in this effort because, I mean, every citizen is entired to their day in court. Now, Does that mean you're I don't, I Trump? do, I, no, <laughs> don't make me curse. <laughs> that would be a hell no. But the very foundation of our country is built on the integrity of our Constitution uh, and the rights and the protections that are afforded to all people. Some crazy uh, in this instance. Uh, we all saw what happened on Jan January 6th. We saw what happened. I was in Lansing when, you know, the troops came marching in there and, and trying to overturn and, and, the, and, the, and, the, and Trump uh, trying to make sure that the uh, uh, Wayne County canvassers. But uh, Sherry, do you, and I'm hearing you here, but let me ask you this. If you said you're not an attorney, but you're an American, you're a lawmaker, you're someone who's Detroit school board, I mean, you know a lot, you know how things work. Do you think, in your opinion, not a legal opinion, that President Trump incited an insurrection? I, I, that's the whole thing. I think, and I would venture to say, I know based on all of the reports, but our country 
country provides an opportunity for a trial, uh, and he has not had that opportunity to be in court and to to be def to, to 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 be defended. Been, been three years. Years. So, 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 so that's the whole thing. Okay. So we have, we have a Democrat three years telling another Democrat, Democrat right now. <laughs> Wait a minute here. Hold, hold your horses. We but don't we have three know, dissenting right? judges from Colorado well, we do, as well. We do. Ellie, you wanted but, to say? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, if I can, if I can just jump in here on the due process question. He did get a trial. There was a trial in the Colorado trial court. There was experts who no, testified. No, there no. were, there, there no, were no. expert witnesses who testified. You're there were law enforcement, you know there. there were law enforcement officers who testified. There were members of Congress who testified and reports were admitted. Were that was specifically that, that charged. Was, that was Would you a, have charged him? Hold, hold on. And was he convicted? On. Hold on. That was a trial. And the lawyers on here know due process does not always mean criminal standards, right? Due process requires a trial before a yeah. new so I'm going to get to Jim Yes, I want to ask you a very simple question. So we have morality clauses that are in many people's contracts, so to Absolutely. speak, okay? I have one in mine. Charlie has one in his. Right. He's never violated. I've never violated. Bottom line is this. If a morality clause basically exists, whether it's spoken, unspoken, does it have to be done, as the prosecutor is pointing out, that way? Or can it be done to say, hey, not in the court of public opinion, but right. rather in the Supreme Court of Colorado, it was determined that he did? Doesn't it smell of partisanship when you have uh, uh, the total well, four to three, court, right? Four or three, but they are all appointed by Democratic uh, uh, governors. G give, a, give me a break. Uh, it, smell, it doesn't even pass the smell test. There's no due process. There's no conviction. It's been three years. He's never been convicted of an insurrection. I would love to, even... love to see any proof that you have of that. The, 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 the president uh, had his, invoked his right uh, that he felt his election was stolen from him. That's his right. But Charlie, and now we have the right to free him. 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 Now we have
in terms of trying to stop the certification and the right. peaceful transfer of right. power for an election. That is something that we haven't seen in this country literally since 1860 when the insurrection uh. against whose context the 14th Amendment was ratified occurred when the South seceded because Abraham Lincoln won the presidency. Isn't there we have many elections. Hold on, we have not seen that. Go ahead, Ellie. So, so I do worry about escalation. I do worry about people saying that, you know, we're just going to take everything to court now. But I think we also have to recognize that what happened on January 6th and what happened after the 2020 election with Donald Trump refusing to cede power was but a is precedent. That, but is that no, a legal no, question? But here's the deal. Is that a legal question or a that political that, question? That's right. the question. Well, the, but the, I mean, the Constitution, the Constitution Is it a legal says, question or a political question? It, 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 it's it's, it's legal, but it's legal. Yeah. But it, the question truly comes down to this. Every tape I saw, Donald Trump, or I'm sorry, this was never put out when he said, go and peacefully Peaceful. protest. Absolutely. Come on, Sherry. Sherry, you take snippets out of context. This whole country and was you based on right. peaceful protest. If right. this former president said, go and peacefully protest, what did he do wrong? That, Nothing. But, that, but that's Nothing. not what he, that was not his intention. Exactly. How do you know what his intention was? He was invoking he violence How and riots and stealing. He made it clear. I mean, do you let's, know let's listen intention. to the secret tapes and hearing him on voicemail. Come on now. Come on. Listen I, to him all. I, 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 listen I, I, to him all. We're this. almost done. Go ahead, read the Colorado Supreme Court's decision in which they laid out the factual record that Donald Trump and law enforcement was giving them warnings that people were going to attack the Capitol on January 6th. And Nancy Pelosi did that. He knew that. Nancy Pelosi did nothing. Last question. 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 Trump in the Supreme Court. Last question. And that's what Colorado Last question has to, to every one of our Thank panelists. You, Sherry. Finally, at the end of the day in November of 2024, will it be Joe Biden and Donald Trump or somebody else? Somebody else or those two? Well, I'd say it needs to be somebody else, somebody younger. Okay. Ellie? <laughs> you know, if you ask for my prediction right now, I think it will be Joe Biden and Donald Trump. Terry? I think it will be Donald Trump and Gavin Newsom along with Governor Whitmer as vice president. She has said she has no interest, but you're saying that, that means that she's that. interested. Okay, Terrence. Donald Trump and Joe Biden, but let's not forget that uh, the Supreme Court in Colorado is taking away every one of those citizens' rights right now. Charlie? They have the right to vote. Joe Biden, Biden and Donald Trump? Right now, Biden. That's going to be it. No question. Yep. All right. Yep. We got an 81 year old and someone who's above the age of 75, yep. both running for office. Some people like them, some people don't. We have both on this panel, and we thank them for joining us today. Thank you all. And before we go to break, Charlie is taking Let It Rip on the road. Take a listen. Colorado Supreme Court said Donald Trump should not be on the ballot. Was that the right move? No. I don't think he should run at all. Voters should decide. So Colorado got it wrong. Got it. Definitely got it wrong. Doesn't the Constitution say if you engage in an insurrection, you can't it's not, run for office? Is it not a felony or is it not considered? He hasn't been proven guilty or anything. Colorado Supreme Court oh boy. said <laughs> You already know it. <laughs> Some people say, though, that the voters should decide not the court. It should be the voters, and there's something wrong with all these voters that are supporting him. I mean, the, the judge could just be biased and not like the person. He should not be on the ballot. But some people say the people should decide, not the courts. Well, That's how I feel. Well. The people should decide. Do you disagree? Yep. Tell her Sorry, I disagree. No. Let the because people decide who they want for yeah. president. Not yeah. the courts, not the politicians, but the people of the United States that they represent. You're mad, aren't you? Yeah. Yes, I mean it. <laughs> Back now on Letter Rip, talking about the latest developments in the Israel-Hamas war and where things are headed into the new year. I'm joined now by familiar faces, Rabbi Asher Lapatin, the Jewish Community Relations Council, AJC Executive Director, also World Peace Association founder, Dr. Mahmoud Al-Hadidi, and Fox 2 anchor and attorney Charlie Langton back with us as well. And we thank you gentlemen for joining us today. Charlie, always good to be with you. Uh, I wish we didn't have to sit here and talk about this horrific war that we're watching unfold 7,000 miles away but here we are months in and rabbi the last time you were on the show uh, we didn't say anything about a prediction as to how this could end mm -hmm. do you see an end and how could it end in your mind 
I do see an end because I see the Jewish state, the state of Israel, and the Palestinians getting along. I think these are good people. These are people that can live together. They didn't have someone like Hamas terrorizing them, both sides, both the Palestinians and the Israelis. I think these are people that could love each other and live together. And I know I sound naive, and I know it's, it's hard to imagine it now, but I do believe, I do believe that, that just like two million Arabs live in Israel currently uh, and are be thriving, there are issues, but they're thriving in, in the state of Israel, I believe that everyone ultimately they'll work together and it's going to be an amazing amazing place it's going to lead the world in innovation because palestinian people are as innovative as the jewish people and so i am hopeful but it's it's a really sad sad situation it's, it's a terrible situation in which we can't uh, even bear to talk about the number because so many of them are innocent children and women and men who are twenty thousand civilians killed in this terrible war just on the side of palestine uh dr al hadidi it seems as though often when you see these protests, it's like everybody's talking about one side, their side. When you look at this, you actually see eye to eye with the rabbi here when it comes to the atrocity of this war. Hamas is the the, the, the one with their blood on, blood on their hands, yes? Well, it's, it's a little bit more complicated than that. It's, it's very painful to see after 76 days of war that we're still trying to point a finger with the number of atrocities and the murders being committed. Unfortunately, religion has been hijacked in this conflict. And it is so sad to see Prime Minister Netanyahu quoting the Torah with his wicked interpretation, labeling Palestinians and Arabs uh, as Amalekites, you know, or Amalek, justifying killing them, killing their children, women, and eradicating everybody. Rabbi, that's wrong. Is it not for, for anybody to say that? Exactly. It's wrong from a Jewish point of view, and it's wrong to demonize the Palestinians. It's Hamas that are terrorists that need to be fought. But even there, it's wrong to use those kind of biblical terms of Amalek. It's, it's just wrong. And, you know, many, many in our circles are not fans of Netanyahu. We want Hamas to be, you know, uh, taken away from the equation in Gaza, and that'll be better for Palestinians and Israelis, but no, sorry, I'm not a fan of Netanyahu at all. Charlie, how do you see this conflict ending as you've been covering it from a local level, talking to Palestinians and Jewish Americans? Well, it is complicated. I, I think, okay. I, I don't know where we're going to solve it today. <laughs> uh, it is interesting, though, as, and correct me if I'm wrong, but Hamas was a duly elected leader in Gaza. They had elections and the people of Gaza voted in Hamas. That was so, years ago. That was but years still ago. In power today. Was no, no re-election, unfortunately. And I started by saying the religion has been hijacked. Not when you see those protests in the streets supporting the Palestinian innocent children and civilians. True. They're not supporting Hamas. They are supporting life. They're supporting the innocent people so, right to live. Why is it so hard for people to separate this? And I have a hard time when we cover it, seeing people not able to separate when we're talking about a war against Hamas, yet the blood that's been shed here in terms of numbers, the most number of people are innocent Palestinians who've died. You're absolutely right. This uh, desire by the Israeli government, supported by U.S. government to eliminate Hamas, was interpreted as a, as a, a, a open check, open season, go kill Palestinians. And this is very shameful for the international community not to be able to hear the cries of the babies and children being killed. They want Rabbi, you and I have expressed our concern about October 7 and the atrocities committed. But then after that, the, the crimes, the number of dead people is, is astonishing, especially bombing hospitals, bombing bakeries, churches, mosques. Even lately, they, they desecrated the cemetery. This with is the Israeli, the, Israel the Israeli people. Army, are doing yeah, they, yeah. they actually went with tanks over a cemetery which is very unusual for an army to do that. And but is Hamas using dangerous. people as human shields? I mean, Hamas mm -hmm. is planting themselves in hospitals and schools.
schools in which they know apartment buildings in which innocent people are, are resting and sleeping. That in itself is just barbaric. Th 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 it? That's terrible. That's terrible to do. But unfortunately, that does not justify my choice. The only uh, sin the Palestinian child or woman have committed is that they existed on that land beyond their control. They were born there. God created them there. They didn't choose to be there. They have the right, like every human being, to live with dignity, to live with hope, and, 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 and to enjoy like, like everybody you, else. Not, Rabbi, to be, not, not, not to be mm -hmm. categorized as animals. Do you think that, the, that perhaps the national media in particular, the national narrative and dialogue, has gotten it wrong in terms of not memorializing correctly those who have died on the Palestinian side of this conflict? Well, I think, that, and that's what Dr. Al-Hadidi and I share very much, is concern for human beings, for every child, for every woman, for every innocent human being. Of Israeli and, or Palestinian. Yes, and, and, and it hurts. I think every Jew that I talk to, everyone that is pro-Israel, feels that, that horror. But the question is, you're fighting an enemy, Hamas, that is hiding behind these people. And how do you do it? And it's very painful. And Israel has to be very careful. And they are. But I certainly think that we have to always worry about every single human being. And I know people who, lawyers who work in the Israeli army, any time there is a bomb that is dropped, they have to get a certification that that is okay, that it's proportional. But it's so painful. It's so terrible. But if, if it is so disproportional to Palestinians, they're taking the brunt of the force of Israel. Does that, should Israel then maybe back off a little bit? No, I think the worst thing would be for Israel to enable Hamas to stay in control. And I really feel that will be 20,000 lives. Now, a lot of them are Hamas fighters, but innocent lives, God forbid that they should die in vain. This is a war against Hamas, and for the so sake that, of the that, Palestinians... That's where we disagree. We agree on a lot of things. We disagree here. The, 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 the notion that we are fighting Hamas, but killing innocent civilians is not is, is not acceptable. So what's the solution, Dr. Al-Hadidi, in in terms of taking care of this militant group called by the U.S. government a terrorist group, Hamas, getting rid of them, if this was ISIS, if this was Hezbollah, if this was anybody else, if it was anywhere else, how would you say it should be handled? There, there are rules of war, there are rules of engagement, and there are also uh, religious rules. You know, Rabbi uh, Hillel uh, have, have said that, that, you know, interpretation of the Talmud don't do unto uh, don't do unto others what you don't want done to you mm -hmm. so so if israel does not want their citizens to be treated in such a way if there's a terrorist hiding amongst a thousand israeli uh, civilians then th then somebody should just come and kill everybody please allow me uh, then if you don't want that scenario and i don't want that i think that's a very uh, ugly injustice to kill so many civilians trying to go after uh, a renegade or a criminal even if you label hamas as criminal that's not acceptable I, we, we should we should abide by human rights and uh, international law and, and, and try to, to avoid utilizing those human so shields. Rabbi, and, them and, and, that but I'd like way. to ask a question. We only have so much time left. Uh, the, they've been accused of carpet bombing. They've been accused of essentially yes. taking bombs and bombing apartments and killing so many right. thousands. How do you change that course and make it more effective? And, and my understanding uh, still is that Israel is doing whatever it possibly can to avoid as many casualties. And when you see that when America goes into Fallujah or other wars, it's a lot. The ratio of fighters killed, of terrorists killed two civilians is much higher than we're seeing in this war, actually. But I also think Israel has technology, and um, I've seen even on CNN that they are using, even with what they call dumb bombs, they're attaching technology to try to avoid. It's painful. This is where and that's we, where we disagree. We disagree with the... This is where, Rabbi, this is yeah. where we disagree mm -hmm. again, because mm -hmm. they're using it as video games. We see the videos attacking a large tower with a thousand people in, and the tower comes down with God knows how 
many people there. We're tight on time. We're going to have time for uh, final thoughts after the break yes. when we come back, right after this. Yeah. Yeah. Running out of time. Final thoughts, Dr. El Hadidi. Thank you for hosting us today. What we need is an immediate ceasefire, an immediate end to this senseless war and, and, and targeting civilians when when it's being done as a video game and the next day they see the, the, the victims crying and, and, and shattered. That has to stop and we have to look for tomorrow. How are we going to live tomorrow in peace? Peace is an essential part of our life and we have to pursue that. We have to start now and it starts by seizing fire, stop Thank the murders. Thank you, Dr. Al Hadidi. Final thoughts. We have to see the hostages returned. We have to see the end of Hamas for the sake of not only Israel but Palestinians. And I agree with Dr. Al Hadidi. The day after is critical. And I hope Israel plays a critical role. Israel fought this battle. It's the right battle. But Israel should be play a critical role in rebuilding. Uh, Gaza, and finally, yes. the people protesting should pro to think about what's good for Palestinians, not just hatred of Israel or of Jews. It is good to see all of you in this season of Very good. so many people celebrating and reflecting in all religions. We wish nothing but the best for Thank both you. groups and everybody else who's watching. Wishing you, you peace this holy season. That does it for this edition of Letter Rip.